Section 3, the changing continents. In this section, we're going to identify how movements of tectonic plates change Earth's surface. We'll summarize how movements of the plates have influenced climates and life on our planet. And then we will describe the supercontinent cycle. So reshaping Earth's crust. As our tectonic plates move, there's a change in size and shape of the continents. Uh, scientists believe this happened over a very long period of time. Today, all of the continents that exist contain large areas of stable, stable rock. We call this a craton. Um, and then areas where those cratons are exposed at Earth's surface are called shields. The continents change shape by slowly breaking apart. The process in which our continents break apart is rifting. It can happen within continental crust or also on uh, oceanic crust. So the process in which the Earth's surface cracks and breaks apart is that A, eroding, B, destructing, C, rifting, or D, transforming. Please write the correct answer on the side of your notes. Some continents also gain material as they break apart. For example, areas of subduction. As one plate subducts underneath another, the terrain on top of the plate that's being subducted can be scraped off and become part of the plate that is riding on top. A terrain is a piece of lithosphere that has a unique geologic history and it may be part of a larger piece of lithosphere such as a continent. The process in which a terrain, a terrain becomes part of a continent is called accretion. So as one terrain is scraped off by an overriding plate, that terrain that gets scraped off and added to the overriding uh, plate, uh, that process is called accretion. So as a plate subducts beneath another plate, islands and other land features on the subducting plate are scraped off, and they become part of the overriding plate. What is this process called? Is it A, accretion, B, terrain, C, landforms, or D, terrestrial monuments? Please write the correct answer on the side of your notes. Effects of continental change. Our modern climates are a result of the movements of the, of the plate tectonics. As continents move to new locations, the flow of air and moisture around our planet changes. Remember from our weather unit, land heats up much faster than water does. Because of this, we get local winds. Those winds can affect climates in given areas on our planet. Geologic evidence shows that ice once covered most of Earth's surface. As that ice sheet melted, many of the uh, climates and the global temperatures changed. As continents rift apart, uh, they form mountains, which may separate populations of organisms. As we get into biology, we'll talk a lot about uh, that process of adaptation. Adaptations may occur within populations of organisms that have been segregated from one another. If the continental plate carrying Michigan were to move southward, what is the most probable type of climate that would occur for us? Would it be A, an Arctic climate, B, a tropical climate, C, a temperate rainforest climate, or D, a mountainous climate? please write the correct answer on the side of your notes. The supercontinent cycle.
So using a number of different evidences, scientists have constructed a general picture of what they think the continents may have looked like prior to where they are currently. Scientists think that uh, over many times in the past, the continents were arranged in large land masses. These large land masses were called supercontinents. Those supercontinents eventually broke apart or rifted apart to form the current smaller continents that we have throughout the planet. The supercontinent cycle is the process by which supercontinents form and break apart, and scientists think this may have happened over millions of years. So why do supercontinents form? The movement of plates toward convergent boundaries causes continents to collide. Because neither continent subducts beneath the other, the plate boundary becomes inactive, and a new convergent boundary has to form. Because that heat from inside of the planet uh, has to be released, it may form different rifting areas throughout the planet. And so other continents may start to break up and rift apart in other areas. Over time, all of the continents collide to form a supercontinent. So again, as heat builds up inside the planet, rifting has to again occur. The continents pull back apart and go their separate ways. Formation of Pangaea. Uh, Pangaea is the supercontinent that scientists think exists about 300 million years ago. The thought is that several of the mountain ranges that we see currently, for example the Appalachian Mountains and the Ural Mountains, formed during the creation of Pangaea. The Tetzi Sea uh, was thought to have cut into the eastern edge of Pangaea. And we'll look at a picture to, to see where this was located. Uh, on a following slide. Panthalassa is the single large ocean that scientists believe may have covered the rest of the planet during the existence of Pangaea. So this is what scientists thought the Earth may have looked like 450 million years ago. Slowly, Pangaea developed. We can see the Tetzi Sea right here. And the global ocean covered the rest of the planet. Scientists think that as heat energy built up inside the planet because of the single large land mass, it eventually had to break apart. So they think that around 200 million years ago, the... the uh, Supercontinent of Pangaea started to break apart into two different continents, Laurasia and Gondwana land. The thought is that Laurasia drifted northward and it broke up into North America and Eurasia. And Gondwana land broke into two continents. Part of it became Africa and the other part became South America. Um, smaller sections of it became India and Australia, along with Antarctica. So this picture represents uh, scientific thought on that process. So you can see where Antarctica would break off and move south. Australia would disconnect from Antarctica. Africa, South America would be attached. Right here is the entire area of Laurasia, where it broke up into Europe and Asia. And North America is kind of by itself here. The modern continents. Scientists think that slowly the continents moved into their present positions. As the continents drifted, they collided with terrains of other continents. And mountain ranges like the Rocky Mountains, the Andes, and the Alps all started to form. Um, the motion also created new oceans and it would close oceans as continents moved closer to one another. This picture represents current locations of our continents along with what scientists think may have existed um, seven, uh, 70 million to 50 million years ago. So they think uh, the continents were slowly drifting apart here and here and they moved toward their present day locations. Africa rotated slightly 
Europe and Asia kind of became back together and Australia continued to drift northward. So the process by which supercontinents form and break apart over millions of years, what is this called? Is it A, plate tectonics, B, supercontinent cycle, C, subduction cycle, or D, rifting? Please write the correct answer on your note sheet. Quick quiz. What modern continents formed from Gondwana land? Modern continents that were thought to have formed from Gondwana land are Africa, South America, Antarctica, and Australia. Geography of the future. Scientists think that the plates will continue to move as they currently are, and so our geography will change. They predict that in the future, all of the continents may come back together to form a new supercontinent. They think that it may look similar to this. Looking at this map, what information might scientists studying plate tectonics gain from studying this map? So notice our key over here. Our key represents what is seen inside of the picture. So what may scientists gain by studying this map? Is it A, the plate boundaries? B, the depth of earthquakes? C, the location of a subduction zone? Or D, all of the above? Please answer this on your note sheet. 